In this video, I will show you the single most effective step you can take to learn graphic design from home. This is what really got me unstuck in my own graphic design journey and the key to producing work that looks appealing and professional. The single most important step is graphic design principles. It's so simple and yet we overlook the rules that apply to any design. Design principles are actually the secret to learn graphic design effectively and for good. By the end of this video, you'll be able to understand the importance of graphic design principles to become an effective designer and become familiar with the five crucial principles of graphic design. Unity, Gestalt, Dominance, Hierarchy, and Balance. Let's get to it. First, let me explain why graphic design principles matter. Most people start learning graphic design software because they think it's the most important aspect of design. And while software is a crucial aspect of graphic design, it's not necessarily the most important. For example, back in the 70s, graphic design was done manually, and it required many different skills, people, and departments to get something done. So, there must be something else that underlies graphic design apart from software, and that is graphic design principles. Design principles give you a foundation from which to build a design. Furthermore, design principles allow you to plan a design effectively well before it's executed on a computer. Not having this crucial foundation is why many of us learning graphic design from home get stuck and frustrated with our results. There are five key design principles you need to understand today. Number one, unity. Number two, Gestalt. Number three, dominance or scale. Number four, hierarchy. And number five, balance. The first principle we'll discuss is unity. The principle of unity creates cohesion in a composition by establishing relationships within the graphic elements of a design. Through unity, we can visually communicate the importance of graphic elements and how they should be viewed by an audience. We can establish these relationships in three different ways. We can show unity through similarity, proximity, and repetition. These are all manifestations of unity, which means that these are different modes of representing unity in a composition. Let's talk about similarity. With similarity, objects that are similar in terms of shape, color, position, or even texture communicate a relationship between them. Relationships in design are very important because we are using perception to communicate complex ideas, feelings, or even emotional states. Let's see a visual example. Here, Objects that are closer together express a more intimate relationship than objects that have more separation or distance between them. Objects that have the same shape express a closer relationship than objects that have a different shape. If we add color to some of the objects, we can further emphasize a relationship that goes beyond shape. Finally, Unity can also be seen in terms of repetition. When you repeat elements in a composition, you establish a relationship between them. And this establishes an internal cohesion that helps the viewer become familiar with the main elements of a design. The next principle is what we call Gestalt. Gestalt is a German theory that says that we perceive the world around us not as individual components, but as a totality. Look at this classic example. You can still read the scrambled words, right? We can still get meaning from these scrambled words because we don't read letter by letter. Instead, we perceive words as whole units. There are three important manifestations or modes of Gestalt principles. Figure ground, 
closure, and continuation. With figure ground, the object and surrounding space create a visual totality. This means that both graphics and space share equal importance. You've probably seen the next picture before. Here, we have one single composition that projects different meanings depending on how you perceive the relationship between the background and the foreground. Next, we have closure. With closure, a design only reveals part of the information, and it's up to the viewer to decipher what's missing. One of the rules of Gestalt is that we humans tend to fill in missing information in order to make sense of what we perceive. Let's see an example. This composition has no outlines, and yet we can see the outline of the letter X with clarity. This is because our brain tends to focus on the totality and not on the individual components of things. Finally, we have continuation. Continuation allows the viewer to go beyond the boundaries of the composition itself. With continuation, we create the illusion that a composition is greater than what we can visually perceive. In this next example, we can see that the lines or pipes go beyond the boundaries of the poster. As a viewer, you can actually imagine the lines going indefinitely. So, in this sense, we can say that the composition continues beyond what we can see. Continuation is a very dynamic principle because we can direct the audience's attention on purpose and determine how people view a composition. The next principle you need to understand is dominance or scale. Through dominance, we can create emphasis, and this allows us to generate interest, drama, and to direct people's attention. Dominance is crucial for generating interest in a composition. We can achieve dominance by an element's scale or size, its position, or even its shape or color. Dominance is one of the most used principles of design, and for a reason. It generates attention and establishes how people view a composition. Take a look at this example. As you can see, there's not a lot to work with in this design. We don't have any graphics, images, or colors. The design is pretty plain and unappealing. However, just changing the size of the text makes a huge difference not only in terms of commanding the attention of the viewer, but also in terms of the overall aesthetic of the composition. This very simple application can elevate a design and make it look more professional. Next, we have the principle of hierarchy. This principle is very similar to dominance. However, hierarchy relates only to the information on a composition and not necessarily to its visual elements. In reality, you will often see dominance and hierarchy working together. Without hierarchy, you get what we call visual noise. Take a look at this example from an old newspaper. As you can see, we don't have a clear indication of how to process the information. All we see is a wall of text, or more precisely, visual noise. In the next example, we see how information is structured in a visual hierarchy. Here, hierarchy helps us visually organize information in terms of importance and primes the viewer to process information in a particular order. As designers, our job is to communicate information in terms of what is most important and less important, and we have to express those levels of importance visually. So we use visual clues to let the reader know what to read first or how to consume the information in a composition. We can achieve hierarchy by combining the principles that we've already seen. For example, similarity or scale. The final design principle we'll discuss is balance. Balance relates to the overall equilibrium between all the elements or components of a design. This is what design theorist Alex White calls equalized tension. In other words, each graphic element in a design competes for attention, but it must do so respecting its hierarchical place in the composition. Balance can be symmetrical or asymmetrical. 
With symmetrical balance, graphic elements are distributed evenly. Most of the time, this is accomplished by centering objects on the page or screen. With asymmetrical balance, objects are not distributed evenly, so primary objects may appear off-center or on the side of a composition. However, overall balance is achieved by counterweighting the off-center objects with the strategic placement of other elements in the composition. I find asymmetrical balance to be the most tricky to understand because it requires a little experience to be able to see it. But once you understand that balance is more about equilibrium than centering objects, you'll see that asymmetrical compositions are more appealing and interesting. If this video helped you in your journey, please like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what I should cover next. And be sure to check out my blog, selfmadedesigner.com.